An occupying force now in total control of a Ukrainian city. Russian military vehicles rumble through the neighborhoods. Its troops patrol the deserted streets. This is the Black Sea port of Kherson, the first Ukrainian city to fall to the Russians. I'm here with my grandmother now, and um, we have enough food for a couple of weeks, so uh, we try not to leave because it's very dangerous right now. And our government asked us to sit at home. The Russian bombardment has been unrelenting. Moscow says it's only targeting strategic military sites. But this is Mariupol now, a southeastern city that has seen some of the fiercest fighting and remains surrounded on all sides by the Russian army. A week into the war, and Ukraine's president remains as defiant now as he did when his country was attacked. Exactly two years ago, the first case of COVID was recorded in Ukraine. The first weeks of fighting were extremely difficult, but we were united and therefore strong, and therefore we withstood. Exactly a week ago, Ukraine was attacked by another virus, another disease. One week ago, at 4 a.m., Russia invaded our independent Ukraine, our land. Some aid is reaching Ukraine. These are vital medical supplies leaving Stansted Airport. With the number of injured and displaced rising by the hour, it is desperately needed. The British Foreign Secretary, visiting allies in Lithuania, has pledged more than just medical aid. We're helping Ukraine defend itself. Our defensive weapons from the United Kingdom are now being used to stop Russian tranks. Moscow says it is prepared to talk, but at the same time, there is no let up in its onslaught. Sky News has verified this video to an oil depot on the outskirts of Cherniv in northern Ukraine. I think that this hysteria will end and our partners will, will settle down, calm down after a while. And, and uh, we will sit down to negotiate, but only on one uh, absolute condition that it has to be equal positions, equal, equal parties negotiating. Many Ukrainians are defending their land however they can. These people have set up a crude roadblock around the Ernodar nuclear power plant as they try to stop or at least stall the Russian advance. While those who have stayed behind do what they can to defend their lives and their property, others continue to pour out of the country. More than a million have now been forced to flee the conflict, and they will not be the last.